Donald Trump surging on the national stage, finding favor with 35% of primary voters in the latest CBS News New York Times poll. That is up 13 points since their last poll in October. Ted Cruz now in second with 16%. Ben Carson dropping from first to third at 13%. Followed by Marco Rubio, Rand Paul, and Jeb Bush all in single digits. Tony Sayers is a Republican strategist, Leslie Marshall, syndicated radio talk show host, both Fox News contributors. Tony, uh, Trump is up 13 points. Mm -hmm. What do you make of it? Well, look, it's also important to note that this is taken, of course, before his controversial comments, of course, suggesting that we should uh, bar Muslims uh, from the country. Trump is definitely a force of nature in this primary, and I think we're beginning to see conventional wisdom surrender to the fact that he could very likely win some of these early primary states. Remember, Gretchen, we've been saying up until this point, well, yeah, he's leading in some polls, but that doesn't mean he's necessarily going to win anything. He's doing extremely well in Iowa. He's in the top two. He's doing extremely yeah. well in New Hampshire. Well, in the top spot. But the real story here that you have to really look at is the rise of Ted Cruz, and that's directly capitalizing on the decline of Ben Carson, because if Trump is going to meet resistance, it very well might come from yes. the right, the conservatives, well, not the establishment. He already has. He, he, got, he got resistance on his comments from Democrats and uh, every Republican in the field. But, Leslie, check out this poll from South Carolina, okay? Look at Trump, 35%. Carson is the next one close, but it's not a close race at all. This is, this is a whopping win for Trump right now in South Carolina. Yes, it is. And quite frankly, although it may be a win for Trump, I think it's a loss for Judeo-Christian values that this nation was Why? founded on. I think it's a loss for the GOP because this nation was founded on religious freedom. This nation is founded on tolerance and we have become such a diverse community. And quite frankly, I don't consider everyone in the GOP or every Republican uh, a racist or a bigot or Islamophobic. And, and I think Donald Trump shows a very ugly side, a French element of that party, and I think it hurts both well, the party possibly, and the political process. Well, we all know now that you cannot have a religious test. That is against the Constitution. He maybe should have phrased it differently with regard to taking religion out of the equation. But look at this next poll, Tony. In South Carolina, support for him before he said the comments, 30%. Mm -hmm. Support for Trump after he said those comments, 38%. Yeah, you see, this is resonating. Yeah, and you do see a lot of things happening here, Gretchen. This is not just because he was bold enough or politically uh, incorrect enough to say something that a lot of people f feel. This is a few things. There's anxiety after the president in addressing the nation after the worst terrorist attack on our country since 9-11 decided to talk about gun control, that he has no idea what he's doing, that leadership in this country is not going to okay. protect us from the rise of terror. So when Donald Trump says something that's frankly irrational and unconstitutional, there's support for that. What increases that support is when the mainstream media, liberal Democrats, and establishment Republicans all attack him for it. So that even magnifies their support of Trump because he's standing up to these institutions, these well, trifecta but, but institutions Leslie, they oppose. Leslie, I have to tell you that I'm hearing from all different kinds of people on the street, you know, in cars, whatever the case may be. Some people are saying Donald Trump is saying stuff nobody else will, but that a lot of people actually believe. Well, because you believe something, because we once had beliefs that the earth was flat, it doesn't mean that it's right. And Tony, you're being pretty PC yourself. Um, we do have to look, quite frankly, at the state this is coming from, a state and a region of the country that have worked very hard uh, to shed uh, negative images with regard to racism and hatred toward individuals, uh, with regard to terrible things that have happened in our history, uh, but, it, but, like slavery, lynchings, uh, etc. Wait, no, wait, wait a minute. And, and, and quite frankly, in 2000... Donald Trump has said that this is not based in Islamophobia. This is based on the fact that the female terrorist who came over, we just found out yesterday, Yesterday, she may not have even been vetted. Yeah. So if we can't vet that one person who kills 14 innocent people, how the heck do we know who else is coming to this country? And don't forget, Gretchen, Gretchen this is on the heels point, of something. Gretchen, Let Leslie point, finish. Sure. Thank, thank you, Gretchen. Uh, Gretchen, to your point, the other terrorist was born in this country only, almost 30 years ago. Most passports in most nations are not stamped with religion. I don't want to see that happen again, a religious test. In addition to that, 
an individual, as I've said before, can be, an, uh, terrorism has no religion. You cannot be a Christian, a Muslim, or a Jew and murder people, well, well, uh, commit right suicide. Right now, Islamic, that, that is absolutely radical Islamists are killing beliefs, Americans. Yeah, the, so yeah. that's, where, that's where this is stemming from. We could go on and on and on and on. I got to wrap it there. Great debate. Thank you. Thanks so much.